Welcome to Frontiers. This is part two of our series of programs on the Rural Providers Conference, a grassroots sobriety movement which moves to a new community every two years. Tanacross stepped up to host this year's gathering. It's an Athabascan community 12 miles northwest of Toke on the south bank of the Tanana River. Tanacross used to be on the other side of this river. After floods tainted the water supply in the 1970s, the community moved here. <laughs> Tanacross is a patriotic place. You'll see a lot of flags, great care taken with memorials at the cemetery. Maybe because of the community's role in World War II. This airstrip was an important staging area for troops and supplies. That and access to the road system changed life forever. There are some who do their best to carry on Tanacross traditions and hope they catch fire with the younger generation. Here's the moose head soup. There's tongue, nose, the chin, the insides of the whole head. It's just wild, it's off the land, you know. These kettles of stew will feed the guests at the Rural Providers Conference. For now, Jerry Isaac and his cousin Mildred take a break from butchering moose. It's rare to hear a conversation in the Tanacross language. There aren't many who are fluent, like Mildred and Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> Jerry joked about the tea made with water from a mountain spring. The mountain water tea was so good that I uh, got replenished, reinvigorated. Tea to give him energy to impress the women. What's so funny about that? Dancing like a spruce hen, you know? <laughs> the joke, though, gets lost in translation. The first of many things to go when you lose a language. Yikai sent. And they can't write it. The word for Morning Star, his great-grandfather's name. The missionaries, they can't write it, so they use the Bible names. Which explains the Isaac surname, and why in Tanacross you have the missionaries to thank for so many first names used as last names, the Thomases, the Jonathans, and the Pauls. Heart, heart, heart. Mildred doesn't miss life in the old village so much. Packing water, packing wood, washing clothes. The load grew as elders stopped sharing their heritage. Because they were afraid of the Gihis misery that's going to come upon them if they did. Gihis? Yeah. Gihis, a priest. The missionaries may have had good intentions, but their insistence that people give up their language and culture stoked the flames of future trauma. They were put to fear and intimidation. Jerry Isaac believes early missionaries used religion to bully his ancestors. That little puppy there, it's a thinking, living, breathing being. There's, he's got the spirit. I have spirit too. Jerry says that the spirit of language and culture, had the missionaries worked to keep it alive, might have made a difference. Had they done that, you wouldn't have the amount of alcoholism, drug abuse, and any kind of self-abuses. Jerry Isaac takes us across the river to the old village where he grew up. A short journey to a place that seems so far away, across the water, and across time. It's a place that will always be home, yet always haunted. I get overwhelmed with sadness and sorrow when I come over here. Jerry stops to make a prayer in his language. Out of respect for his ancestors. I told him that we have visitors here. We're here to just show them the village. After the floods, a grass fire destroyed most of the buildings. A combination of factors that led to the move. And what we didn't do was we didn't prepare spiritually. Jerry says there should have been a ceremony to tell his ancestors about the move, a tradition that might have also brought closure to the living. Call the names of all your family and tell them, let's go, we're moving to this other place. You know, so that you don't have restless spirit there. We didn't do that. 
But even before the move, there were signs the modern world had encroached. Especially Yet not all of the changes were bad. Here's a photo of Jerry's dad, Oscar, standing in front of his new car. The missionaries also taught people to garden. The kids tended them and were kept busy all the time. This was a fish rack. There's a steam bath over there. Everyone also hunted, trapped, and fished without interference from the government. But that changed after the move. Just be careful. The church survived both floods and fire, and for the most part, still looks as if a service could be held here today. Although the church bell is gone, the emotions still reverberate. You can feel uh, presence. Can't see it, you just feel it. Jerry still grieves for the days before the missionaries misunderstood and sometimes condemned the spirituality of his ancestors. Years ago when I came here, I'd feel really overwhelmed with loneliness and, I don't know, just sadness. And right now it's just peaceful. Like so many others who made the journey, it wasn't an easy crossing. It took time for the past to make peace with the present. The shot signal, it's time to eat. It took me three hours to do the fry bread. A feast for the guests and enough to feed the whole community. Maybe they don't roll out a red carpet. But you won't go hungry. Ready? The moosehead stew has arrived just in time. The celebration inside is already underway. Some of the old Tanacross Amen. Amen. served up with the new. See, we have ham here. Where's the love in it? It's right here. It's right in front of you. Moosehead soup. More than a meal, food for the soul and food for the future. Yeah.